<laughs> because uh, right now this is a way to damage audience, yes, not to, to, one, two, three, is it better? Okay, that's fine. Yes, so first of all, let me, uh, like in five minutes, recall the previous lecture. Yes, and uh, I would say the whole lecture in five minutes. So what is the state of quantum computer? We said that, okay, if we have n qubits, uh, then state of quantum computer, first of all, we denote it in this manner. Yes, and uh, the second thing that this is element of a vector space, complex vector space. Yes, and uh, depending how you prefer to look into mathematics and on vector spaces, you can consider this as a C, like a dimension of the space two to the power n, or you can consider this of, as a tensor product of C2 spaces. Yes, two dimensional complex spaces. Yes, and uh, what? There are n, n of them, thank you. And uh, uh, so there are, with the two, say, conditions, one was a condition that the vector must be unitary, yes, and because we consider this as a complex uh, space, yes, we have a metric there, yes, a Euclidean metric, basically, yes, then we insist that it is equal to one. And another thing that we say that two states are equivalent if the uh, difference between them is just multiplication on a complex number, yes, so. And uh, the complex number should be of uh, models one. Yes, and uh, by, by the way, so I almost always will ignore this because from what we see, those two states will be just undistinguishable. Yes, so if, like from everything which we can do with them would give us the same result in the end. Yes, so I would kind of ignore this. Yes, so this was the first part of uh, previous lecture. The second part of previous lecture was that we tried to understand which type of operations we can do uh, with them. And uh, okay, it happens that this is linear operators from the same space where phi lies, psi, psi lies. And uh, okay, we restrict ourselves only to unitary operations, yes? And uh, moreover, we told that okay, even that physically the fundamental restriction is only the fact that it is unitary. But all existing computers allows us not all the operations, but the operations which are allowed has the form that in most of, if you look on this as a, as a tensor product, yes, yeah, so then in most of the coordinates of tensor product, it uh, acts as identity. And okay, there is only few of them. A few means one, two, or three, yes, and uh, uh, then uh, it is some unitary operator there, yes, in, uh, c to the power 2k. Yes, and uh, I also showed the string notation, so if we have uh, one qubit corresponds to one line, operator is a square, yes, and if it is a smaller thing, so we have only these guys, uh, so I plot it. I draw it like this, yes? So say V2, yes? So then it looks like this, and this is the program how it looks like, yes? Uh, there was one moment, uh, there was two moments actually on which I didn't pay attention, but they might be important. So first of all, so if we look onto this operation, unitary, it preserves uh, this condition, yes? So if it was vector of, length one, after unitary operation, it is length one. Yes, if the two vectors are different by multiplication by a constant, 
after you apply unitary operations, they will be still uh, equivalent up, no, up to a multiplication by a constant. Yes, yeah, so actually, kind of, as soon as we restrict ourselves unitary operations, yes, we can consider arbitrary vector here because it's, it would be just, uh, how to say, persist arbitrary vector a, and choose initial condition as a vector like this. After this, we don't need to impose this condition anymore, actually. Yes, and the second thing, yes, uh, I wrote this, but I didn't stress attention that uh, we use uh, the following representation of a unitary operator. Yes, so where u is unitary operator, yes, and h is some self-adjoint operator, yes. Quite often, this will be very convenient to look like this. For instance, uh, I can write square root of u, yes, always, yes, and mean, okay. Okay, actually, there are two square roots. Yes, uh, as usual, yes, but okay, at least one of them exists, and this would be e, e, e to the power i times the same h over 2. Yes, now, yeah, and uh, uh, such type of representation is very convenient, and uh, moreover, you can test yourself uh, also because self-adjoint operators, it is very explicit, formulation, what is self-adjoint operator. And uh, unitary operator, you need to check a lot of stuff, you know, that's, it's, it's dif more difficult to enumerate them. Yes, so then, kind of this one-to-one -one correspondence between unitary operators and self-adjoint operators might be useful. Yes, so that's, that's it. That's the recall of the previous lecture. And we uh, haven't done uh, important thing yet. So we haven't completed our axiomatic model. No, I, it's, I call it axiomatic. It's in, uh, it's, I don't write axioms. Yes, so, so we haven't completed our mathematical model. Uh, we need to understand how we can read information from computer. The problem, the main problem here, so the paragraph four. Paragraph four, measurements. This is the most, the main difference. Yeah, so because all of this actually comes to the idea of classical computations. We just want to, you know, okay, restrict ourselves to unitary operations, but what's the problem, yes? But uh, the problem is that with quantum computer, we cannot, even if it is in state psi, we do, there is no way to know the state psi. Yes, so we can read something, but not everything. Yes, this is the same as the only way to observe the quantum system is to modify it. Yes, basically. And this, unfortunately, and I say this really unfortunately, is applicable to quantum computers because this restricts our possibilities a lot, yes? So let me start uh, with the me measurements of uh, one qubit system, yes? And uh, so assume that we were in the state, yes, this one. Then we impose that there is operation to measure, yes? And uh, on this, uh, in string notation, yes, I will, you, I will denote it like this, yes? So I have like uh, an arrow, yes, but arrow I will not write, so this is the measurement device, yes, it shows to you. And uh, assume that we apply for this qubit measurement operation. What will happen? Yes, and will happen the following, so there is no determinant process in the future, so it's become probabilistic. And it happens like this. This probability a squared, we read, so we get to, you know, 
okay, to the device which do measurement, yes, so that's presumably classical computer or, or might be yourself, yes, we read value zero and psi goes to state zero. So you modify the state, yes, so psi changes. So we were in a state psi and v becomes in a state zero. Yes, and this probability absolute value of b, we read the value one and psi goes to one. I cannot uh, hear you, sorry. You are more or less, you are essentially assuming the uh, Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Might be, yes. Uh, but, uh, you will give us another interpretation of quantum mechanics. So this, is, now look, so I'm not a referent to quantum mechanics, more or less, yes? So I, I refer to how, say, IBM computers, works. Yes, okay, at least supposed to work. What is the goal of IBM when they construct their quantum computer? So they want a device which operates like this. Yes, and uh, yes, it corresponds to one of the interpretation of quantum mechanics, yes. Uh, so, yeah, and I don't say anything about phase shift or so, yes, and I want to leave quantum mechanics beyond of this course. Yes, so there is a, how to say, motivation for this model, yes, which is quantum mechanics. Yes, but after I impose model, well, I can forget about it. I can work with the abstract mathematical model, and I'm going to work exactly in this philosophy, yes? So today will be the last lecture where there is some references to quantum mechanics. Yes, actually, there will be one more lecture where I use quantum mechanics as an inspiration, yes, for, for something, yes. Uh, but uh, in general like this. So in particular, so what does this mean? This means two things. First of all, we don't, we cannot predict the output, yes, so this is a probabilistic feature. Another thing is that, for instance, if we do measurements two times in a row, yes, we just, do like this, yes? The necessary result of those two measurements will be the same, yes? Because if it happens that it goes to poor zero, yes, to poor state zero, then okay, with, under measurement, with probability one, it gives us zero. Yes, if you do measurement of the same qubit uh, two times, yes, then you will necessarily get the same result. By the way, yes, no, but no, 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 the, the, it will destroy, yes, so that's, so first of all, now I consider only one qubit, yes, and uh, as soon as we remember, so as soon as we get this state, and it is not a direct product state, then there is no notion uh, state of qubit, yes? So then we, we lost this notion. So there is only state of system. Assume that we have computer with one qubit. Okay, completely useless, yes, but uh, we are studying. Yes, so uh, uh, with this one. By the way, so inside it, and I don't know why I forgot to include it in my notes, yes? So this contains a way how people actually can measure Psi, uh, can measure uh, psi, yes, in a certain sense, yes? So assume that you have your favorite program, so you have one qubit, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and you have you there your favorite program, yes? It's a bit strange story, yes? But okay, with one qubit, it's strange. With multiple qubits, it's not strange. Yes, and you do measurement. Assume that now you run it one million times, yes? So, so you start here, say, from zero, Yes, and you do your program, you run, you measure. You repeat, you start with zero, you run your program, you measure, and do this one million times. 
then uh, you get some amount of zeros as an outcome, some amount of one as an outcome. And this becomes an estimate for absolute value of a squared and absolute value of b squared. Okay, you don't know a and b, so you don't know phase shift between them, but you know the absolute values. No, so this, what peop, uh, this is how quantum computers of IBM structure are supposed to be used sometimes. No, so uh, I, I mean the following kind of, I do this, after this I kind of press a button restart, yes, yeah, so, so as you, with your computer, yes, you press button restart, so you erase everything, yes, and you start from the beginning once again. So if I, theoretically, if I do the same operations, On, so, no, okay. <laughs> so this is a kind of more philosophical question, yes, that I did, I have a something physical object, which is called qubit. Yes, I call it qubit. Yes, and I can do with it operations. I did them. I do measurement, and okay, I read something on my classical device. And after this, I also have an option to do with this qubit operation restart. That's kind of set its state uh, independent of everything. So they will start with the same story. It's not a cloning. It's no, I start with the same. So I assume, no, look, 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 okay. I, come, I go to, I refer not to quantum physics, I refer to IBM. Yes, and IBM has an opportunity to set up initial state as all zeros. Yes, there is opportunity to start your. You start from zero, yes, from the state zero. Yes, they assume that they can put it in such state, yes. I don't know how physically they do this because of, yeah, So, no, that, that's, uh, the, you, you're asking completely correct question, yes? So, first of all, uh, the, even that method which I tell that we do one million times, yes, uh, even that we know central limit theorem, yes, and we know that the expectation of number of zeros is A squared, it will be never A squared times one million, yes? So, this is approximation. Yes, so the, this is, this actually tells the first philosophy, yes, of, of quantum computations. So it's good for, for approximation. It cannot be very good for precise calculations, yes? So the, the second thing which we will see that you should not, okay, uh, at current state of devices, yes, later might be, so there is no fundamental objection. Yes, but it's better to work with a small amount of information. Yes, this is what, why Shor algorithm works very good there. Yes, because you enter small information, you want to read small information, yes, and uh, there is a complicated calculations inside. Yes, so this is for what quantum computer is good. Because really, we will see later that uh, Entering information in the computer is a hard story, and now we already see that to read information from quantum computer is a hard story, yes? Uh, so let us do the following. I will say this as a model, yes? The rest we consider as a philosophical discussion, yes, here.
Yeah, so that's, and the, even your question with 10 to the power minus eight, which is completely correct, but still we consider this as a you know, philosophical part of discussion and stay with this formal definition. Yes, and by the way, I very ask you, uh, ask you to ask as many questions at this part as possible. Yes, because my experience showed that exactly this part of the quantum computers are <laughs> less understandable, yes. It's, Yes, uh, okay, so this was one qubit, and this is very easy what is happening there. Now assume that we have a system of a lot of qubits. So what would happen there? So assume that we have state psi, yes, which would be, so sum of a k k as we wrote this, yes? But here it will be more convenient for me to write it, and uh, let me write here, it's, it would be important, yes? Write here what are the limits of uh, summation, yes? k to the power two minus n minus one. Yes, usually it's not important that I omit it, but here it would be important. And I also put n in indexes n here. Yes, then let us look on k. Some of them starts with zero, and st some of them starts with one. Where is minus one? No, it's my, so look, it's minus one, yes, and there is actually a condition that sum of a k squared is equal to one. So the, this is an extra condition. Yes, but I, I kind of don't pay attention to it right now, yes? You know, what I'm doing, it's automatically will hold late, yes? So some of them starts with zero, and some of them starts with one. Let us write them separately, yes? Uh, now I try to, uh, try to measure the first qubit, yes? So kind of if you want to measure some intermediate one, you need to, to, re to reorder, go to uh, this guy, yes, to reorder them. But actually, if you follow your intuition, you will be correct. So there is nothing, you know, against this, yes? So then I will write it as a two sums. So now it will be sum of k goes from zero to two to the power, uh, uh, zero, two to the power n minus one minus one. Yes, and this will be still a k, and I will write it in a such form. But now I put here index n minus one, yes, because I have kind of I, one qubit I wrote separately, yes. And plus k from zero to two to the power n minus one minus one, a, and now two, I will not read the, the index, read <laughs> yourself, yes? I do not prepare. So, so I assume that I have it in this state. And I'm going to do measurement of the first qubit. So I don't know, but, but there are some numbers, say k, which are under. What? I don't know them, yes? I don't know, yeah? but, but physics know, yes, or the God is know, or Schrodinger knows, yes, who, yes. So, and th this equality is correct, uh, whatever it is, so, yes. No, I don't know the numbers, but they exist there, yes. And so I wrote it in a such form. And let me now tell, kind of, this would be axiomatic model, what actually the measurement is doing, yes? This probability uh, sum of a k squared for k from zero to two to the power n minus one minus one, yes, so the norm, square of norm of this vector, Yes, we get 
zero, uh, we get uh, zero. What product of what? Oh, that's wonderful that it do like this. <laughs> Thank you for, for technical. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very convenient. I didn't know that it is like this. Yes, what's your question? I, I cannot hear. I'm sorry. Yes, so I decompose. Look, so here this is 1 qubit, and here is n minus 1 qubit. So this is the way how I write. Yes, so if I have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, yes, I will write this as the same as 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Yes, I can arbitrarily, how to say, decompose them into two parts, yes, and write it like this. This is, this is notation, yes? And uh, like formally, this notation follows the tensor product, basically, yes? Assuming that this is a vector. Yes, or oh, in the corresponding space. But, you know, we're not necessarily follow there. So, but, okay, we get zero, and state becomes uh, sum of a k squared uh, Sorry, yes, of this sum. So it's kind of get the first bracket. Yes, yes, so. Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not familiar with the, the history and even a lot of professors in my city kind of tells that I'm not a good guy because of this. Yes, but what I can do. Yes. Yes, so I go to the first part. So because, okay, the, now it happens that the first qubit is really in a state zero. But still there are rest of qubits, and they should be in some state. And we prescribe uh, this state, actually, yes? And it's exactly will be this first bracket. Okay, uh, how to say, it should be normalized, yes? Because of this, we have a factor here. But this factor is nothing but just way to normalize it to make it of absolute value one. Yes, and uh, those of you who are freak mathematicians, you can say, hi, what we can do if we divide by zero. Yes, but if divide by zero here, then probability of this event is zero. Yes, so it, it would never happen. We can ignore this. Yes, and okay, uh, the second thing I would, uh, I'm, uh, how to say, uh, I will not uh, write everything, yes, uh, presuming that you can uh, yes, that you can copy the same thing by yourself, yeah? And uh, so it is consistent story. Yes, it still works like this. And uh, now I would do a statement, which I would not prove, yes, but you believe to me, that if you measure two qubits, yes, like you have 100 qubits and you measure two of them, it is not important in which order you do this. So in the, with the same probabilities, you will get the same results and put them in the same state, yes? Please, uh, how to say, don't ask me to do this exercise. Yes, it's actually really kind of calculus one exercise, yes? No, I don't know, might be calculus two, I don't know where. <laughs> what is more applicable, yes? So that's a statement, yes? So, and this actually allows to do the same thing. So if you have a lot, yes, so we have a 10 qubits, yes? You can repeat the same story to measure all 10 qubits, yes? And uh, you will get uh, certain frequencies of two to the, like of 
2 to the power 10, so uh, uh, 2 to the power and possibilities which you have, yes. And okay, then you can try to get the uh, frequency, but at that moment you lose the advantage of quantum computer because you need to repeat it 2 to the power 10 times at least, yes, because you cannot uh, uh, measure frequency of uh, 1,000 objects measuring less than 1,000 times. In that case, you have multi uh, exponential multiplication. Yes, so basically you lose a lot of advantages which you get before. Yes, so we have to restrict ourselves with uh, applying this technique in order to get values of A and B. It's better to measure not a lot. Yes, this is philosophical statement. Yes, and before I proceed, I would like, so, so this is what uh, in physical devices is available. Yes, but before I proceed, I, I would like to say uh, certain abstract measurement business, yes, so which theoretically could be implemented, but okay, people don't pay attention, yes, to, to this. And uh, this is so abstract measurement. So, uh, assume that we have H self-adjoint operator. Yes, and those who studied quantum mechanics remember that observable is self-adjoint operator. It's observable. Yes, then, because it's self-adjoint, what we know about his eigenvalues and eigenspaces, yes? So it has certain number of real eigenvalues with the corresponding eigenspaces to them. Yes, it might be not of the dimension one, it can be of any dimension, and we know that VK and VL are orthogonal. Yes, so they are pairwise orthogonal spaces. Then you can write uh, any vector V, uh, any vector Psi, yes, in, in this, in our original space. Yes, we can write it in the form that psi is equal to sum over k, and this is the same k as uh, eigenvalues are here, of a k times uh, phi k. Yes, and phi k is of the same size, so if I write here n, yes, it's still n here. Yes, it is just a projection of vector psi Onto, uh, uh, onto in the eigen space, yes? And let me uh, assume, okay, normalizing a bit, I can assume that, so I, I know that psi k uh, is in vk, and assume that psi k has norm one, I'm not forbidden, to, so I can write in such way, yes? And in that case, it even becomes a correct statement, yes? Uh, because, okay, here vectors, here vectors, you know, and even this is a correct state, possible state, admissible state of a quantum computer. And so then what is happening? Then it's happening that, uh, after measurement with a probability AK squared, we read value, we get value lambda K, and uh, stay, new state is phi K. Yeah, so, and this is uh, uh, also 
also, this is a fundamental restriction. So there is no way to construct other observation operator. Yes, so, so all of them has to be of this type. Yes, there is no other option. Yes, and uh, of course, if you consider about measurement of the first qubit, yes, it will be uh, the following operator. So I will write it as a matrix to the power n, two to the power n. I separated with blocks, yes, and this block will be zero. This block will be identity, and this will be zero and zero. Yes, so you can check that actually if I apply this abstract theory to this operator, I will get exactly what was uh, explained here. Yes, so because this was just a proper projection to a proper space. Yes, so that's, that's it. Uh, so the comment which I would like to say here, that here you have to be very careful because now it is not true that if you consider two observables, it might be important in which order you do measurement. Yeah, so this is the, the fundamental feature. And the, it doesn't matter only in the case if they commute. Yes, those who enjoyed quantum mechanics, yes, remember that such type of relations exist there as well. Yes, that's, this is something fundamental from quantum mechanics, and we don't violate uh, the rules of quantum mechanics. Yes, so that's, I think that's it about measurement. Let me check in my notes in case if it's, uh, I forgot something. So, Yes, and I wanted to say, but I s said this already, that uh, this is the price, one of the prices which we pay, yes, for using quantum computers. So the previous time we saw that how great parallelism we can take with the uh, quantum computers, but this is the price. So even that we calculated very complicated psi very precise, very good, and very quickly, we still don't know those values AK here. And even their absolute values. And in order to get their absolute values, we have to spend a lot of time, even approximately. <laughs> yes, so that's, uh, that's it, yes. So this is the price which we need. Well, can you? So this is commutativity. They need to commute. I cannot hear you. When did they commute? No, I didn't express, but okay, I can when the corresponding eigenspaces are the same, basically. That's. Uh, that's the same, and uh, this is actually the simplest reason, because if they're not the same, yes, then uh, uh, the final state definitely will be different, because in one case it's projection on one set of spaces, yes, and in another case it's a projection on another set of spaces, so they cannot give the same result, yes, basically. Uh, so not taking into account the probabilities of getting numbers, yes, but just looking on the final state. And if uh, the spaces, coincide, then also, first of all, they compute, and second, uh, with the probabilities, it will be the same. Okay, so questions about measurement, and please don't be shy. This is the, the most confusing part of the course. This is the most confusing 45 minutes of the course. For what? Yeah, no, but <laughs> so they, they, it's hidden here, yes, basically. So you cannot, yeah, you, it's not possible that you know the result, yes?
I don't know, mathematically, I think everything is, uh, how to say, complete, yes? The, the self-consistent, the story is self-consistent. Yes, I hide this. This is the, the feature. Because, so, uh, okay, up to the, the knowledge which uh, we have, yes, up to the information which we have, IBM computers works. Okay, it's not exactly. Yeah, sure, sure. But the goal of this course is exactly, how to say, to hide all quantum mechanics. And technically, today, this was the last moment when quantum mechanics somehow appears. And after this, we have a mathematical model, and we study only this mathematical model. And I consider this as a, uh, so, okay, let, let's, uh, so I will start uh, the next paragraph after the break, yes, but before the break, so let me tell the, the philosophy why I create a course in a such style, yes? Assume that at some moment of the life, yes, we will have quantum computer. Then we will need, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like. Uh, no, 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 no. It's it's different. You should consider this uh, as uh, you know. Assume that you write in Python, yes, and you have the a black box function, yes. Uh, how is it? You you use some library, yes, and this library could be written on C, yes. But why on C it could be written on quantum computer? Yes, you prescribe what is the input, yes, and the, in that case input is uh, your program basically, yes, and you get a result, which is the result of measurement. In the, like, to, to be, to have a good program, you need to do at least one measurement, yes? So you send a code, yes, and you get uh, some output, yes, which is not deterministic output, yes, but okay, your software develop, you have to accept this paradigm, yes, and then, uh, how to say, it's your business, yes, how to use this in your code, yes, later, uh, if, so we're going slightly slower than I expected, so I don't know if we're able to reach everything, but definitely what I will show, I will show how to do quantum Fourier transform. Yes, so do Fourier transform, the, how to say, fast Fourier transform, even faster, yes? <laughs> I show that it is a, there is a possibility to solve linear equations faster than classical computers, yes? It will be not precise because of this uh, problem of, yes, of probabilities, yes? But uh, still faster, yes? Yes, so, so, okay, there would be artificial examples of algorithms when something should happen with probability one, but, like, be realistic, yes, it would be very rare, yes. <laughs> what? Yes, so with, with short algorithm, you do with a, uh, so that's you, you need to have a big number and you want to decompose to multiplication. So with high probability, you will get one number which is the 
one of the factors. Yes, it's not necessary that this is this 100% probability. Even if you have it with 1%, yes, then you very quickly test on your classical computer. And okay, if it doesn't work, you run once again. If it works, then you're happy. Yes, this is a possible use case as well, yes? Uh, so uh, I wanted to say something. Yes, the, the, the part of the philosoph philosophy is that you have to include it in the classical program, yes, so this is. Yeah, so, so, no, we, we, you know, we, you are completely free, you know, to, to do manipulations with, okay, in, in abstract uh, theoretical world, to, to do manipulations uh, with interaction to classical computers. So, yes, you can do, for instance, you have uh, several qubits, yes, you do measurement here, and depending on the result which you get, you, how to say, in one case you run here, yes, and if it's one, yes, if it is zero, then you do something here. Yes, the answer, theoretical, it's possible, uh, but uh, we will show in the course that it actually doesn't give you anything better than just do, calcula do calculations and, uh, uh, how to say, and measure in the end. Yes. No, no, no. I, let me oppose to you and uh, <laughs> agree with you. Yes, I remember what philosophical concept I want to say. Why I say the course in a way that it doesn't refer to quantum mechanics. Assume that we have do course without quantum mechanics. Yes, why I do this simpler than it. Yes, I hope that what I told is simpler than quantum mechanics. Because, because if at some point uh, these computers appear, we, we will need quantum software developers. And if you will have even amount of them, half of the amount which we need software developers now, there is no chances that we will find enough people who understand quantum mechanics. Yeah, so we need to have, a, we need to, to have a knowledge, we need to have a developers who, who doesn't know all the details. Yes, and this is a good proxy, yes? The same as I do this with, uh, I write programs and I don't know anything about transistors. Yes, we, which are in the <laughs> in the underlined. Yes, so this uh, uh, the, and the, that's the same model. Yes, so uh, that there was a logic which is kind of the on top of the physical device of classical computer. Yes, Turing machine. Yes, you can say, and this is Turing, not Turing machine. This is actually assembler of quantum computers. Yes, so that's I, the the correct uh, association is assembler. And even so, we will do it in something in some language which is called ku assembler. Ku assembler. Let us have a break, five minutes break, and after this, continue.
So the next paragraph will be uh, uh, the following. Yes, oops, uh, so uh, the plan will be the following. I will announce the plan because in another case it can be a bit confusing. Yes, so uh, first I do one qubit operations. Yes, qubit operations. Yes, and uh, I just show a few of them, kind of, and shows how it works for, for general states. Yes, so how to operate with them is your, if you are not fan of tensor products, yes, basically. And uh, a second thing, so this is paragraph five, yes. There will be paragraph six, which uh, I show the first quantum algorithm, yes, because before we were just playing, yes, and I want to, show the first quantum algorithm as fast as possible, as soon as possible, yes. And after this, there will be next paragraph, so I give more deep theory of one qubit states, yes, of one qubit uh, operators. Yes, so tell the kind of all the important part of them. And after this, I will go to two qubits. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, this is not planned for second half of today's lecture. This is a bit of, this is actually planned till to the end of the blackboard. Yes, and okay, it starts, uh, it would be in the middle of the next lecture. Yes, so, okay, one qubit operations. And so let me once again, yes. Yeah, thank you, yes. Yeah, now it's, everybody is feeling strange when they do up chi, yes, but in my case, it's some chalk, actually, that is, this is, uh, I, I have this problem, <laughs> yes, that I do this with chalk. So assume that you have one qubit, yes, what is this? So then it's state x0 plus y1, yes? And uh, okay, assume that you have just single qubit state, this is u. This is one, this is state of one qubit. What, mean, what means two state? So it's a superposition of two states, yes? Yes, and uh, okay, we, s we have a one qubit operator, as I told that this should be unitary operator and should be linear, yes, on the K, uh, you, uh, matrix two by two, so we have four um, complex numbers, yes, and not all arbitrary four complex numbers will give us uh, unitary matrix, but okay, let's uh, up to now be calm, yes, and assume that this matrix is unitary. And uh, then you should consider this a multiplication on x, y, yes, thinking that the x, uh, the first coordinate corresponds to zero vector, one, second coordinate corresponds to one vector, yes, and okay, let us do this, yes, then what we have we have that this is a uh, x plus b y, yes, and c x plus d y, yes. And now, okay, I will ask you a question, and I hope that you will answer, not I will write this on the blackboard, yes. Okay, if I start with zero, to where it will go? So if, if I, I would like to write the result in this notation, yes? Yeah, be, because I, I will tell, so, so okay, to multiply vec matrix two by two by vector uh, of two coordinates, it's easy. Yes, assume that we have five qubits, yes? Then it should be matrix two to the power five times two to the power five, 32 by 32. 
So I, I will not have a time to write it on Blackboard. And even if I use presentation, I will not have a space on a presentation to show this. And of course, you would, would not be able to calculate. Yes, and if you have several gates, several operations, and you need to multiply those matrices, come on, there is, there is no way you will do this. So I recommend to do calculations in a such way. So you consider kind of a basis, and you look what is the evolution of basis, and then, how to say, it would be easier to, to work. So because you never need to multiply, yes, you just have an initial state, and you see its evolution. Yes, so this is what's going on. Okay, to where zero will go. So what? A zero, C one. Yeah, okay, I don't remember. I was confused. Should I use uh, lines or uh, columns? Yes, so let me check. Yes, so there is a way so to how to uh, remember. So zero corresponds to vector one zero. Yes, so we should substitute here x equal to 1 and y equal to 0. So, so the, the basis is, this is first vector, yes? 0 is 1, 0, and 1 is 0, 1. Yes, and 1, 1 is 1 corresponds to 0, 1. What? Yes, yes, I need to, to do this, but this kind of, we need to get used to that notation is always like this. Yes, so because if I repeat it every time and if you as a software developer write it every time, you, you know, spend all the time in writing this. Yes, and if you write it one zero, then you will get vector AC. And this is exactly what is written here. Yes, and okay, if you go where goes one, so yes, it goes B zero plus D one. And uh, uh, what I would like to say, usually I will specify the operator Yes, not in terms of this matrix, but I will specify it in two relations. One like this, and another like this. Yes, and at that moment I avoid question of Charles. Yes, basically. Because whatever, now zero and one can be arbitrary by basis. Yes, it's, it can be anything. Yeah, yeah, so, but, you know, <laughs> I have a reason why I omit some details, yes, because later they will disappear, yes? And uh, okay, I will, in most of the cases, I will not specify the matrix. So we can do something with the matrix in order, you know, to, you know, to practice, yes? But the main thing would be this one, actually. Yes, so, and now I would like to specify two operators which are kind of the most, the, uh, the two concrete, the most frequently using operators, yes? There would be later more, but let me start with two of them. Yes, so one is not. And sometimes the not would be also written as x. Yes. Just this is the way how people got used to this. Yes, because not is so frequent. You need one letter. This is letter x, capital X. Yes, and uh, how it works? Zero goes to one, and one goes to zero. Yes, so natural. Yes. And in that case, x zero plus b uh, plus y one goes yes to 
x1 plus y0. Yes, and this is consistent notation. Even if I write this in a kind of not in a proper order, but still I'm working with vector. This is mathematical object, and I, as a mathematical object, they coincide. Yes, so this is the same as y0 plus x1. Yes, so this just to get used. Yes, so it's not that I assume that this is a hard story. Yes, the second will be H. Hadamar, yes, and I'm Hadamar, and it might be Charles say the last letter T or D. I always D. I always forget this. Yes, and it works as following. And remember, this operator we will use very frequent, and I will explain why that uh, soon. Yes. So zero goes to one over square root of two of zero plus one. Yes. And okay, after this we need to have one, yes, which should go to also to vector of uh, absolute value one and to be orthogonal to this one. Yes, and in another case it's not unitary operator. Yes, so remember, unfortunately, not all the operations like this, yes, not all lines like this, gives you unitary operator, yes? So the first condition is that the absolute value of each of them is equal to one, yes? This is, how to say, straightforward condition. Yes, and uh, the next condition is that uh, because zero and one was orthogonal, the images has to be orthogonal as well. So the scalar product of those two guys should be equal to zero. And uh, let me write it somewhere. A, B plus C, D is equal to zero. Yes, actually this is, this is all. Yes, so if it satisfies this condition, then yes, it is a unitary operator. Yes, but let me not prove this or, or so. Yes, you let you trust me <laughs> in this. Yes, and okay, so to where go one? Yes, of course, there are plenty of options. There is, it's not predefined. But I will consider, I would like to consider a special operator it will go to zero minus one. Yes, and I need to, in both cases, I need to have a multiplier in order them to be of uh, length one. Yes, so this is the, and here the, the scalar product is zero, yes, so it is like this, and corresponding matrix is one, 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 minus one, and uh, one square root of two in front. Yes, so this is the matrix. Yes, corresponding to it. Why this operator is very important? Because one of the applied tasks is that for quantum computers that you can really produce random number. Yes, if you do zero, yes, if you start with zero and apply H operator, yes, and do measurement, I'm presuming that your quantum computer was a perfect one, yes, then you will get a truly random number. So with probability in one half zero, with probability one half it is one. And uh, in computer science it's not an easy problem just to create it like this. Yes, yes, no, and I even have heard that uh, uh, we either in Samsung phones either already have or are going to have uh, so the random generator based on, on this idea, yes, but this I don't know because I don't have any official, you know, 
rules. This is why I'm so free to speak, yes, because there was no official announcement, there is no NDA <laughs> or something like this. What? Ah, okay, this is news even, okay, good, good. So, so I have heard this is a rumors, yes, but. So because of this, it is very important element. And okay, uh, so uh, now let us try to understand how it works if we have a, a several qubits. Yes, so let me uh, take my favorite uh, let me do my favorite story, yes, and assume that we managed to arrive to this state, yes, so of two qubits, yes, and uh, would like to apply this Adamar operator to the first qubit. How we would do this? So I suggest we do it like this. Like, I will write it very, very detailed. Yes, this is the last time when I write it very, very detailed. Yes, so, so I write zero, zero as a zero, zero. Yes, in a such way. Yes, and I remember that I'm going to apply H operator here. Yes, so it will go to one over square root of two, zero plus one, zero. Yes, and now I open brackets back and we'll get one over square root of two, zero, zero, plus one over square root of two, one, zero. Yes, so I applied it for this element. Yes, and for one, one is equal to one, one, it goes to one over square root of two, zero minus one, one. So it's equal one over square root of two, zero, one minus one over square root of two, one, one. Yes, and now I can combine them back. Yes, so then one over square root of two, zero, zero plus one over square root of two, one, one, will go to one over square root of two times one over square root of two, zero, zero plus one, zero, plus one over square root of two, which is this one, times one over square root of two, zero, one, minus one, one, yes, and in the end, okay, it is one half, zero, zero, plus zero, one, plus one, zero, minus one, one. Yes, it doesn't have any, you know, philosophical meaning, it's just illustration of how to make computation. And the similar stuff can be applicable if you have more than this amount of qubits and uh, <laughs> longer, longer, and longer. Okay. Uh, ah, no. So I cannot go to the algorithm immediately because I want to show uh, the parallelism, in fact, as a, as a tool here. Yes. Assume now that we have state, yes, which is a k, k, yes. And I want to apply h to the first qubit. Yes, so I want to consider operator, which I write h identity tensor identity, yes, and usually, of course, I will limit this part of tensor products with identities, yes, somehow it will be clear to which qubit I do this. So I want to do kind of the same as I was doing here, so I would like to do, to separate the, the first part of 
So to understand where is zero, it is not zero. So I write it. So here, yes, and I uh, write it in the same manner. So this is a k zero k here n minus one. Yes, plus uh, sum of uh, a with index two to the power n minus one plus k one k. Yes, and to this guy, I am ready to apply the Adamar operator. Yes, because now this has uh, the first qubit independently. Yes, so this guy, this part will go to sum of a k, one over square root of two, zero plus one. Yes, k n minus one, oops. Yes, and this guy, okay, well, yeah, and this guy will go to sum of a 2n minus 1 plus k, 0 minus uh, 1 over square root of 2. Uh, just a second. So I should not be lazy, I write it here. Yes, sum of a. 2 to the power minus 2 plus k, mm, 1 over square root of 2, 0 minus 1. Yes, and here I still have k in the end. Yes. But on one could be less. Yes, and okay. Now, here I have both 0, uh, k n minus 1, like this. So here I have both 0 k and 1 k, and here it has both 0 k and 1 k. So inside quantum computer, yes, because this is physics beyond, this is vector space, yes, so they will uh, summate to each other. Yes, and let me see what would be the result. Let me see what would be the result, and the result will be, okay, sum of, and let me calculate coefficient which will stay in front of zero k. Yes, I have some coefficient here, yes, which would be one over square root of two a k. Yes, and I will have some coefficient here, which will be a, to the power, no, with uh, index to, to the n minus one plus k. Yes. And I will have, let me consider, so let me consider here what I will have is one here, yes, and I would have the same actually, a oh, similar, not same, a k minus a. 1 plus k as a coefficient. Yes, and applying a single Adamar operator, I made, so now let me write k from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1. I made 2 to the power n minus 1 summations. Yes, here. Yes, inside computer it's done by itself. This is a source of parallelism, yes? You cannot do any operation, only, you know, limited number of them. But still, uh, if you are doing them, you can do up to 2 to the power n minus 1 in parallel. Yes, so, and uh, those people who uh, likes GPU, yes, will be happy. Yes, how many operations you can do at the same time. Yes, but uh, remember, so this is a bless which you have, which we have, yes. So bless and curse, so this is bless too. Yes, huge parallelism. So th there exists 
uh, you know, a price for which we pay uh, or the fact that we cannot do reading, we have to do measurements. So it's, it's not a source. I mean, this is how it works. Yes? So if you originally was in a, some state, yes, then you apply just one gate, yes, which takes presumably one you know, piece of time. No, I define it gate, H. Yes, so this is H, yes, and uh, this is this one. Yes. Uh, so the, ah, okay, I didn't define notion of gate. Ah, sorry, gate, is an, gate and operation are synonyms. Yes, so one operation, one gate is synonyms, and the gate, so they, when they, consider such a scheme, yes, then, okay, one square on this scheme is one gate, yes? And, uh, okay, it's very strange that I forgot to tell this, but thank you, Charles. Yes, because, okay, because of this, it is called gate-based computers. Yes. <laughs> so because the, the, there are other type of uh, quantum devices, yes, which are not based on gates, yes, on this, single operations, which kind of imitates classical programs, yes, but only they become quantum, yes? So, yes, kind of, the, the, this is the fact that kind of, yes, this is superposition principle of whatever from quantum mechanics, yes? But uh, this is a consequence of my, uh, abstract model, yes, at the same time, yes, so this is a kind of, a, at that time, I would like to mention that I really did not uh, refer, do, didn't have a reference to quantum mechanics. I already referred only to the model which I prescribed, yes, so that's, quantum mechanics has finished, yes, so, I assume that there is a model, so what is the state of quantum computer, what are allowed operations, how they work. Yes, there is a linear algebra there. Yes, and here I show how linear algebra works. Yes, mathematicians, those who enjoy a tensor products, say yes, this is because of tensor product. Or you can consider this as a expressions, how I write it here, and I will all the course try to write it like this, not trying to reference to tensor products uh, by two reasons, because this is easier to understand. The second, I'm not expert at tensor products as well, and if I do tensors, I will make a mistake by myself on the blackboard, yes? So, uh, yeah? So the, the only, uh, the last thing which I would like to say uh, about this one uh, could be states. Okay, let's try to understand. So, okay, beyond this, still there is a matrix of size two to the power n, so it's two to the power n. Yes, and we have this operator H. What is the, ma what matrix corresponds to it? So if we do it on the, say, uh, so I will ask two questions, to the first bit and to the last bit. Yes, to the last one, the answer will be simpler. Yes, but to the, to the first, so we did it for to the first, so let us <laughs> try to understand what is the matrix, and this will be question to you, yes? Because if I write an answer, you know, this uh, no lesson, yes? So we, we see this, uh, we saw those calculations, yes? So he, here is the answer, yes? And basically now all what you need is just to understand where you should put, okay, uh, you can put one over square root of, of two in front of it, yes? Because all coefficients are either zero or plus minus one over square root of two. So the rest is either zero plus one or minus one. So the question is where?
So let me write an answer, yes, this is true, yes. And the true feature is that actually, okay, you write very nice exposition, yes, but at the same time I had the same answer, but I cannot write it so good because I know the other feature. So I look on to these numbers here, yes, and I can consider this as a matrix two by two. And it should be the same as matrix corresponding to H here. Yes, basically. Because kind of I fix all coordinates except the first one. Yes, and this gives me those two. Yes, this I fix everything zero. If I fix something else, then I will get this square. Yes, and it should be the matrix corresponding to H. Yes, and if I do with the last one, Yes, the answer is simpler. Yes, I just do two by two. Yes, is, so diagonals, and on which of them it will be H. If this is if I apply to the last one. So this is first, first qubit, and this is last qubit. Yes, but once again, I will never refer to those matrices. This is just for our exercises, yes? Because pff, to multiply matrices two to the power n by two to the power n, I mean, I don't know, yes? <laughs> for, for what then this course is, yes? And okay, we have five minutes left, yes? So I will not uh, do much with the next paragraph, but let me formulate a problem which I would like to to solve as a first one. Yes. So assume that we have function f which goes from uh, n digits, yes, and gives us a is the zero or one. Yes, how to say? Question, yes. Uh, is this person a Sarah Connor? Yes, this is and, uh, the telephone directory, yes. And, uh, but assume that we know some additional information about it. That one of the two statements holds. Either f is constant, so it is always zero or always one, or f is balanced. Yes, so it's uh, either hal in half of cases it is zero, and half of cases it is one. This is an artificial problem. Yes, uh, it's hard to imagine that in real world you have pre-known information like this, but you don't know the function. But assume that you do. We mathematicians, we can solve the, any problems which we pose to themselves. Yes, and um, question: uh, How to do this fast? Yes, with classical computer, what you can do, you can just sample. Yes, and in that case, you need to run at least 2 to the power n minus 1 plus 1 samples. Yes, because if you get all of them constant, yes, then you know that this is constant because it cannot be balanced anymore. Yes, everything what is happening before, yes, okay, there is a chance that you get two different numbers, then you know that it is balanced, but you cannot guarantee this, yes? And you can do a bit more with probabilistic things, yes? So you start to, okay, well, with what probability you do, then you get a bit better result, but still. Uh, like the thing which I do today, yes? So uh, I would like to present quantum algorithm which do this with a single, Inter single run of f. But for this, I need to explain what is a run of f in quantum computer. Yes, because there we need to introduce some gate, you know this, <laughs> or something like this. Yes, so we need to have unitary operator, yes, of which one, yes? And the true, re true answer is the following. So let me consider n qubits, yes, and we cannot calculate and write the result in the same qubits. 
because in that case, our function is not reversible. Yes, and we, it has to be reversible. What we do, we add one more qubit. We call it Atsila qubit. And we impose certain operator, I will call it QF. Yes, and it call it quantum oracle of function f. And it is doing the following. Remember that I want to write how it acts in basis. Yes? And for this, then I will do the following. I assume that I have x, so the vector of length n, and y. And I write here a, which means Atzilla, yes, even that I suppose to write one, yes, but so excuse my not precise, yes. And uh, uh, I say that this vector will go by operator QF, will go to the first coordinate x, it's not touched, yes, and the second will be y plus logic plus f of x, yes? And uh, this is reversible operator, yes, because if you have two different inputs, you will have two different outputs. It uh, sends a basis vector to basis vector, yes, so it's uh, unitary, it's reversible, no, it's, uh, it's a, uh, how to say, eligible quantum operator. How to implement it, I leave uh, outside. And this, it's, this is actually a huge cheating, which is done in... Uh, when, when what? What, what do you define as cheating? A plus, yes, okay. So this is a lo 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 logical plus, so this is zero or one. No, no. What do you call ah, so how to write it in a, ga in a basic gates. Yes, in the gates which exist on a quantum computer. Yes, because here I uh, say that this is Q of F. This is unitary operator, so this is eligible gate. Yes, but does it exist on a physical device? It's a question. Yes, so how to write it with the gates which are allowed by physical device? Uh, so, no, the true answer is the following. Any unitary operator can be done like this, but uh, the, how to say, it's the same thing as uh, uh, for any algorithm, uh, so, so for any problem, there is an algorithm which implements it, yes? So this is a statement of this kind, yes? So kind of P equal to NP, uh, okay, no. So we choose three sad problem, yes? So yes, there is an algorithm which check it, yes? But, you know, if it is too long, yes, there is, how to say, no matter to have it, yes? So because if you go to practical things, so this... Yes, so this is... Yes, so this is question, this is the same question as computability for classical computer. Yes, that's true. But we will see that, the, uh, how to say, it is much harder to implement, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> unitary. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> I mean, so this is, uh, this is a cheating in a certain sense that, okay, this we can set up with a table. Yes, and this one, you know, if we set up with the tables of lengths, of exponential lengths, then, you know, we lose all the profits. Yes, so that's uh, a question. Yes, and uh, this gate will be called quantum oracle, function f. And in what I do later, I assume that this, we have implementation of this quantum oracle. And let me give you an answer. And those of you who are curious, I will tell how in one uh, running of QF is to check if it is uh, constant or balanced, yes, but why it, the algorithm is true, I will tell on the next lecture, yes. So, and the, the algorithm is the following. So I have n qubits, and I, in the beginning, set up them as zero. 
Anything else? And I have a Ciloku bit, which I set up as one. Or I can set up with zero and apply not operator. Yes, it's, it's the same. After this, I do H, Adamar gate, apply to each of them. Yes. After this, I apply this QF. That's here. And uh, after this, the, the Acilla qubit I don't touch anymore. Yes, but I do this H here once again. And now I do measurement. to this n qubits. And if I get all zero, then this is constant. If I get something else, then it is balanced. Yes, so it's one of the two possibilities. Yes, so f is either constant or balanced. Balanced, balanced, yes? So this is uh, how it will work. Yes, but why it is like this, yes? Those of you who are curious can, you know, practice at home, yes? There is nothing more than, you know, the things which I showed inside. Uh, those of you who wants just to enjoy the show, Yes, then please come next time. I will <laughs> show this. Okay, so thank you very much. Questions might be? No? Okay.